let's build an iOS live event streaming app similar to Facebook Live or Instagram Live using SwiftUI components of the Stream Video SDK. Using the Stream Video SDK for iOS, you can easily build audio and video calling, live streaming, and audio room apps using reusable SwiftUI components. The final project of this tutorial has only two screens. On the first screen, we can start the live stream. The second screen displays custom reaction animations, a comment field, and a button to stop the live stream. You can download and explore the final SwiftUI project from this GitHub repository. The demo SwiftUI app we will create in this tutorial will run on Stream's global edge network, so you do not need to fear about achieving low latency, scalability, or reliability of the live streaming app. The key features of the app include backstage mode, where you can make preparations for audio and video before you go live. You can easily publish your live streams using an iPhone or iPad, or using your favorite streaming software that supports the real-time messaging protocol that is RTMP, like OBS Studio or Wirecast from Telestream. Let's begin with the following chapters. We will create a SwiftUI project in Xcode. We will install the video SDK and broadcast a live stream from an iPhone. I will show you how to render and watch a live video from a host. We will then look at how to publish RTMP using OBS Studio. Finally, we will look at what you can do next. If you are new to Stream Video, check out our website and sign up for a new account. You can check the product pages and get started with Stream Video. We also have excellent documentation for the various SDKs such as iOS, React, Android, React Native, Flutter, and JavaScript. Let's open Xcode and create a new SwiftUI project. We will select iOS for the platform and an application we leave it as app and click next. I will name the app I'm live, but you can name it whatever you want. Then I will save it to a location. We now have a blank SwiftUI project. Let's install the SDK using Swift Package Manager. We can do this by going to File and select Add Package Dependencies. In the search box on the top right, I will paste this URL that fetches the main iOS video SDK from GitHub. So let's click Add Package and wait for some time. The iOS video SDK has three main components. The first one is Stream Video. Stream Video is the core SDK that does not contain any UIs. Stream Video Swift UI provides reusable Swift UI components for building audio and video calling, live streaming, and audio room experiences. And Stream Video UI Kit is a UI Kit wrapper for the Swift UI components. Since we have a Swift UI app, we will deselect the UI Kit version and add the package. You can see from the Xcode navigator below the apps folder, we have all these package dependencies. Nook provides support for lazy image loading. We have the core video SDK and Swift protocol buffer, which is a mechanism for serializing a structured data. Then we have WebRTC, which provides the audio and video calling functionality. Since the live streaming app requires the use of microphone, we need to set permission for that. To do this, we select the main app folder and head to the info tab. You can see we have all these keys and values. By putting the mouse cursor on any of the keys, we have this plus icon. Let's click that to add a new privacy. I will scroll to the section privacy and look for microphone usage description. When adding the microphone usage description, we can also enter a custom string that will prompt the user about the use of their microphone. We can also leave this field empty. If you leave the value field empty, when users launch your app for the first time, they will get a default string from Apple requesting the use of their microphone, which they can allow or disallow. So let's leave this field empty. To broadcast a live video from an iOS device, we need to do three things. We set up the SDK create a call object and initialize real time transport for audio and video. If you are building a production live streaming app, you should set up the SDK in a location of your app 
where life cycle events take place. Since we have a SwiftUI app, we will set up the SDK in the main app file. In our case, we have amlifeapp.swift. We will import stream video. Then we create an instance of the video client. We will use the init closure to initialize the SDK. So let's add the following properties. To be able to access the video SDK and work with it, we need a user, user token, and API key. So after defining all these properties, we need to initialize the video SDK using an API key, a user and user token. If you create a stream account, you can get the API key from your dashboard. If you are building a production live streaming app, the user token should be generated from your server side implementation. For the purpose of this tutorial, we generated the token and the API key for you. After creating a stream dashboard account, you can use your API key and our token generator service to generate a token for testing purposes. The last thing to do is to create and join a call. Here we specify the call type as live stream and the call ID. For this tutorial, you can get the call ID, the API key and other user credentials from the live streaming tutorial on our website. If you check the live streaming tutorial on our website, the user credentials will be similar to this image. So I'm going to use the information to fill all these placeholders. Next, we have to add the live stream view. So let's create a struct over here for the live stream view. To display the information, you are now broadcasting from your phone. When you run the app, you have also noticed the vista contains another view, live streaming character, that is also mixing from this project. It is live streaming illustration animation. I have the animation already created for you, so I'm going to place it in the project navigator. From this dialog window, I'll make sure all these options are checked and click finish. So this file contains animated SwiftUI illustration. Let's also add the animation assets in the assets folder. So all these images are SVG illustrations. In our main app file, you can see when the app launches, we display the content view. Let's remove that and delete that file. Over here, we want to display the live stream view. That is this live stream struct. From the toolbar, you can see the device that is selected is my iPhone. So when you run the app, you will see a screen similar to this one that says you are now broadcasting from your phone, as well as the live streaming character animation. Let's move on to the next rendering and watching live videos from a host. In this chapter, we will build the following screens, a screen to start the live stream and another screen to stop the live stream. We will enhance the watching experience with fancy and memorable SwiftUI animations to make the events and activity streaming delightful and engaging to end users. We will also add live comments view to the watching screen. To render the host video, we will follow the same steps we did previously. But in this case, we will leverage the SDK's video renderer. So in summary, we set up the SDK, create and join a call, and initialize real-time transport for audio and video. By looking at what we did previously, you can see over here we have the live stream view. In this chapter, we will build a new UI for the live stream view. So let's delete this one. I have the file already prepared for you, so I'm going to drag it to the project navigator. I will make sure all these options are checked and click finish. So in our main app file, you can see this uses the previous live stream view. So let's update it to use the live stream view file we just added here. So that has this struct. Let's copy that. To summarize the live stream view, we first create the backstage where we have a button to go live. And once we are live, we show another button to stop the live stream. We also have two mixing files. That is why we have these errors. The reactions view contains all the Swift UI animations. We will add all the animations to the project, but we are not going to create them in this tutorial. We will add the comment view as well. The reactions view contains other Swift UI animation views. So I will create a folder here and call it reactions. Then I will add all the animation files. 
So let's look at a summary of the live stream view. This is the first screen we see when we launch the app. So we have a button to go live. And once we are live, we also have another button to stop the live stream. Then we have the reactions view containing all the animations and comments view. When we go to the assets folder again, you can see we have all these other animation assets. I just added them previously. So from the toolbar, my iPhone is still selected. When you run the app, the go live screen appears. And once you tap it to go live, we get the stop live screen containing the reactions and live comments field. So we can add live comments on this screen. This is how to render a live video from a host. Let's move on to the final section by publishing RTMP using OBS Studio. In the previous session, I showed you how to publish live streams using an iPhone, but leveraging the SDK's flexibility, we can publish our live streams from any device. In this session, we will publish the live stream using WebRTC. To do this, you can use any live streaming software supporting RTMP. There are several of them, but I will recommend using OBS Studio or Wirecast from Telestream. To be able to live stream from OBS Studio, we need a server or RTMP URL and a streaming key. We can obtain these two credentials by printing them in the Xcode console. Let's select the main app file. To print the server URL and the streaming key, we are going to use the task closure. So let's update the information here. So when we run the app, we want to print the RTMP address as well as the RTMP streaming key. So let's run it again. So you can see from the console, we have the RTMP URL as well as the streaming key. I will select the first one and copy. Let's launch OBS Studio. To set the credentials in OBS Studio, we go to settings. You can see we have the service set to custom. You can select the other options. For example, if you want to stream to Twitch, YouTube or Facebook Live, we will leave the service as custom. Then we are going to replace this server key with the one I copied from the Xcode console. Let's go back to Xcode again. Then I will select the streaming key and copy it. So let's remove this key and paste the one we have. After you set the server and the streaming key, you need to click apply and OK. We have now set up the server and the streaming key so we can go ahead and start streaming. To watch the OBS live stream on the iPhone, I'm going to launch the app from Xcode as well. From the iPhone screen, you can see we have two people watching the live stream. We can add multiple people using the companion web app of stream video. To do this, I'm going to join the call from the live stream tutorial in our documentation. That launches the web app of stream video. From the iPhone app, you can see we have three people watching the live stream instead of two. So one from OBS, one from the web, and one from the iPhone app. So this is all we have in this tutorial. I showed you how to broadcast live streams from an iPhone. I showed you how to render a live video from a host using the video renderer of the SDK. We didn't end there. We used OBS Studio to publish the live stream and watch from an iPhone and also with the companion web app of stream video. We have covered the basics of what you can do with stream video in building a live streaming app. I encourage you to check our website and learn more about the video SDK. Thanks for watching this video.